back again, people. We're back again, we can be time. And we turn some of these into beautiful beats. So without further ado, this is Weekend. What's up guys, it's another episode of Weekend Beat Time For you guys who are new to the channel Basically every single week we get together And you know what I mean, I flip a beat I, I make sample based um, hip hop, man 90's influenced hip hop, that's what I do Some boom bap And uh, you know what I mean, we try to challenge ourselves And I show you uh, different techniques along the way, man Stuff that you might pick up Because I'm just sharing the knowledge, man That's all we're doing, man So uh just shout outs to everybody who's been subscribing, man. I really appreciate that. And, uh, and if you haven't done yet, man, but you're interested in making beats and listening to some tunes or whatever, man, hit that, uh, hit that subscribe button, guys. All right, guys. Now, to sample this, right, what we're going to be using today is uh, we're going to be using this thing right here, all right? Which is the Roland SP404. I'm not using the, uh, the 1000 today. I just thought, you know, let's change it up. I know some people, uh, you know, they want to kind of see the, the different machines being used, and that's all good. I try not to use the uh, SP404 just because it, it's really time consuming, man, which is all good. I've put some time aside today, man. So, but what it requires, especially when you're doing this type of sampling, it requires a little bit of preparation before we do it. Because, I mean, as you guys know, uh, I don't use any sort of computers and that sort of stuff. So, um, I'm going to go into how we're going to sample into this machine um, in what we can call or describe as a standalone sampling. All right, let's do it. All right, now here we are, guys. My trusty old piece of shit turntable. What we're going to be using this for is uh, obviously to play our record, but I'm going to show you guys how we're going to prepare the sample. Now, here's the sample here. It's a, just around here. This is the song here, right? Oh, this thing has a speaker, that's what. Alright. The way we prepare this is that we find the track, right? And here's the old school uh, style of marking your records. You see that thing right there? I've got a sticker on it. All I've used is, um, I've taken, you could use any sticker, right? As long as it's not too adhesive, because you don't want to leave residue, you don't want to leave the, the glue inside the grooves of your record, you know what I mean? Um, here's something, you can get like those stickers, those round dots, you can get strips, whatever you want, man, from an office work supplier, something like that, you know what I mean? Um, you could steal them from a primary school, you know, of somebody's uh, good behavior chart or some shit like that. Now, what I'm using is this, right? And if you notice, right, what I've done is I've cut out a strip, all right? That's all I've done. Now, once you've got a strip cut out, let me just show you this, right? The idea is, is to cut out a strip like that. Oh, damn. Come on, focus, baby. Anyway, there's a strip cut out. What you want to do is you kind of want to round the edges just a little bit, man, because you don't want it to, to knock really, really, really hard on this record. And what we're doing is this. Here, come with me, right? What we're doing is this, guys. You're going to place the needle... On the record like this here let me turn this off you place the needle on the record right just like that just like that then what you do is you grab this sticker and you slide it underneath underneath the record underneath the needle sorry and you place it up against the needle essentially what happens is uh, like I've like I've done here Right. What happens is this. Right. Let me put it here. If you listen carefully, you you could hear the needle skipping into the groove. See that? It's a way of manually cueing your records. This was very, very, very common practice 
with turntablism, man. When you, if you were a DJ, you wanted to find your cuts, you wanted to find your breaks, you wanted to do anything like that, you were battling, you would you were beat juggling, you were doing any of this sort of stuff, man, you'd mark your records. You get on your record, you put man, you'd see stickers all over the thing. It looked like a fucking Christmas tree. You just stick uh, you you put your markings everywhere and quickly when you were doing your set, you'd go like that and you'd find your cue. It would bring the needle to the point that you wanted to do it. Now the reason why we're using this this um this DJ technique, right, is because we're gonna have to keep playing this record over and over again and we don't wanna go with the needle and try to cue it and cue it and cue it and try to find it. We just want a quick way of getting to that to that point that we're looking for. Alright? Alright guys, this is the basic theory the behind the way that we're sampling, alright? This machine here hasn't got a slicer, all right? We can't sample something in and then go through it and then split it up like the um, like the MPC 2000 or any of your um, your, your, your programs like Fruity Loops or, or any MPC and that sort of stuff. This requires a type of manual sampling, start and finish, switching it on, switching it off. Very similar to the um, EMU. Uh, the SP-1200 or the SP-12, whatever. This is the way it's done. Basically, we're going to have a waveform, right? This is going to be our record plane. These two lines are... That's the continuous symbol. It's like a mathematical symbol. I'm pretty sure it is. Anyway. So, we've got the waveform running like that. On our computers, right? Or even on my MPC, it shows us the way how many times we want to slice it. We're doing this inside our mind, all right? What we're going to be doing is we're going to cue it up. So we're going to have record set, the recording set, sorry. We're going to cue up the record. We're going to play it. And when our sample starts, right, we're going to follow the timing of our sample. And when our sample starts, we're going to press the record button, wait for that one pad to finish, Press record again, and then what we're going to do is we're going to end up with the slice. Cue it up again, press play. This time, uh, we're going to play it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to count. One. And then on the second one, we're going to press the record button. Then it's going to record this. Turn it off on three. So that's what we're doing. We're going one, two, three, four, five to however many pads, but each time we're moving from pad one, to pad two, to pad three, to pad four, all right? I'm gonna give you an example of that. This is a very lengthy process, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you maybe once or twice how to do it, uh, just so you guys could get an understanding of how it's done, um, but I'm not going to sample the whole thing in this video, man, because it's gonna, it's gonna be really, really lengthy, all right? But it's just, it's, it's good knowledge to have, man. You could apply this to different things if uh, your computer's down or um, whatever. You need to do some sort of manual um, sampling. All right? All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's do some sampling. All right? All right, guys. Here's the process. Let's run through it. I'll do it twice. All right? I'm going to hit the record button. Uh, this isn't a video... Like, like I said, I, I don't make videos like specific to uh, drum machines, all right? This is just about the process. So I'm pressing record, I'm going into pad one, right? And this is the count that I'm going to do, like this. See, I'm holding the record, queuing it up. There. Maybe I'll go a bit slower, queue it up. I might go there, there, three, four, five, six, oh, seven. That's what we're going to do. So, I'm going to just cue it up here. You ready? Here we go. One, two. See, I stopped it on the second, right? I stopped it on the second. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cue it up again. This time for pad two. I'm going to skip one. And on pad two now, I'm going to start there. And then stop on three, right? So, cue it up. 
One, two, three, see? Now cue up pad three, quickly go over here, cue it up. One, two, three, four. Cue it up, pad four. One, two, three, ready? Four, five, there. That's four pads sampled, all right? Let's jump at it. See, check this out. See, look, check this out. That's, that's standalone sampling. So um, look man, sampling drums is even more difficult. It's more difficult because it just requires you to be quicker and more precise with the timing of your um of uh of your recording, right? So uh, I'll give you an example here. I've got it's the same record, right? Same record, and it's called uh, Mr. Mr. Welfare Man, all right? Now at the start of Mr. Welfare Man, there's this this drum. Hear that? Uh, that sound, by the way, is not from the record warping. It's actually warped sideways. It's kinked. That, that's why it's making that sound, man. So, um, well, not much I can do about that. Okay. All right, you hear that? That's what I need to sample, right? Now, here's the thing. It's right at the start of the record, so I'm not gonna. I'm not going to uh, cue it up. But here's the thing, the speed of it, it goes boom, 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 like that. Exactly like that. Boom, 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 like that. Boom. Check this out. That's the speed that I need to do it at. Right, so it plays about six pads in a matter of seconds. So, record. The good thing is, is that this actually um, repeats. You know what I mean? It repeats. It's just the same thing over and over again. So what I need to do is, that's the speed that I'm going to hit the record button. Start, start, stop, start, stop, because that's how the speed of it goes. That's the speed. On, off, on, off, on, off, off, like that. Ready? That's how quick it is. You see what I mean? You do the kick as well. to be a little bit quicker but you know what man it's fun you know what I mean uh, it tests you man and you try new things so um if you can you know what I mean be be a pro man you gotta fake it till you make it you know what I mean so this there is a sample here I believe yeah you see that it's the start of this oh, song. Man, oh. So if you want that sort of rim shot, it's on the same record, and it is, if I'm not mistaken, it's On and On, the track is called, On and On. This is part of Buddha Records, man. So, um, yeah, so anyway, it's, that's, it's the start of that, right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this record is producing nothing but gold. Alright, so I am going to be using another track, man. I think a whole beat's probably going to be made from different tracks of this uh, soundtrack. Uh, different songs of this soundtrack. This is number four. It's called The Makings of You. Very, very sweet. Now, listen to this. Oh my. Holy shit. I'm going to sample that. Same style. Right? That tempo, I'm going to sample that in. All right, guys. So here are the samples, right? Kick. Now, the kick uh, with this, because it has filters on it, it allows you to 
to uh, manipulate it a little bit. So I put the, the kick, I put the uh, the bass up a little bit more on that kick. This one here, I've, I've copied, I've resampled it. Uh, so I've got the same kick, but I've got it lower. So this is going to be my ghost kick. I've got a video on ghost kick if you guys want. There's a double hi-hat. It's a very, very, very dirty double hi-hat. Hear that? It doesn't even sound like a hi-hat. I'm, I'm relying on the crackle of, of a 45 to give me uh, that sound. You know what I mean? And then I've got this one, which is my, uh, it's almost like a clap or a rim shot that I've got off that record, all right? You see, in the first one, this is what I had to record, right? All right, that's my hi-hat. Then I had to add my snare. All right, now I'm up to the phase where I'm going to, on this pad here, I'm going to record my kick on top of it. All right, I'm going to record a real basic type of kick on top of it, all right? So, uh, this is how it's done. With this machine, if you haven't got this machine, don't worry about it, man. It's just interesting uh, to know how different beats are made on different machines. Now, this is the resampling method, right? So, I'm going to record it on this, right? This is going to have my loop right there. So, I need to resample. It asks you to get your levels or whatever. It's asking, I'm going to record, right? So I'm resampling, but I'm going to record. And I'm going to put it into this pad. It's asking you, which pad, my man? That's the one that I want. Then you're ready to record. So I press that button there. And all these buttons that are flashing, they're saying, look, man, these are the available pa available um, pads that you could play with during this uh, recording. So it's because everything's flashing, what it's saying is, it's like, dude, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. All right, so I'm going to start with these two, which is going to be my last loop that has the hi-hat and the snare, and I'm going to be adding the, the kick, hopefully with a little bit of, um, with a little bit of uh, swing on it. All right, cool. All right, now here we go. Ready? And then I need to stop the recording right on the loop, right? Let me put the volume up here, man, get myself into this energy a little bit, man. All right, let's do it. So the, in my mind, I've got this panic on. Now that's the pattern that I got in my mind, but I'm not going to play the like that because I'm going to use my ghost kick for that to create a little bit of lift. All right. So I'm, you'll see what I mean. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Let's see if the loop worked out. Here comes the loop. Did it loop? Yeah, it looped. All right, cool, cool, cool. And I got high swing. Now, that's natural swing. I haven't got... Um, this isn't quantizing. You can't add swing with this machine. You have to rely on your own feelings, all right? Uh, your own feel. Now, I've got the ghost kick, so I'm going to add the ghost kick on it now, all right? Let's do that. So I've got my next loop is ready to go, and I'm going to add my ghost kick, right? So that's my loop right there. It's got a button here called gate. Gating is basically... You, you you need to hold it down in order for it to continue playing. So make sure that that's off so you can just have that loop playing in the background, all right? Now I'm going to add my ghost kick. Ghost kick is set. Ghost kick is basically a supporting kick for the main one. The main one is keeping the tempo. Boom, ding, down, down, boom, 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 boom. You know, something like that. The ghost kick is the one that gives you the lift. It's a short sort of boom. A little backup like that if you don't do that it just sounds really thuddy it sounds like ba -ba, you know it just it sound makes the track sound flat all right so ghost kick got that ready to go resample it i'm going to sample into pad 12 now queuing it up i'm going to play pad 11 ready all right let's go ghost kick time let's go uh, how much what pattern am i gonna do yeah let's do it Alright, that's it. Alright, 
right, so um, I, for I forgot to uh, stop the loop, right? So I had to do it again, but I got a nice clean one. Now, it's important, like, I like to hum a tune in my head when I'm creating my drum loop, even if it's not going to be the right tune. Even if it's not going to be that. Because I'm trying to evoke my feelings onto the track. I want to create that swing and bring it out, man. That's how I do. Bring it. Bring it out. All right? Just like that. All right, cool. Next part. What we're going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to add some of these effects on it. Right? I'm going to play around a little bit. Maybe a reverb. But this is really good with effects. I might might add some, um, you know, uh, maybe... Um, some compression on it, man. Use an isolator. Do mess around with it a little bit. Try and make the drum sound nice and fat. Once I've got it sounding fat, I'm going to resample my loop with the effect on it. Cool, cool, guys. So the one I decided to go for was the oscillator. Now, um, the oscillator in this, it, it, it just—it's basically just grabbing. Um, the different parts, man, whether it's highs or lows or anything, it's just grabbing a section and I'm able to sort of put it up or put it down um, just to shape the sound a little bit. All right, man, I'm just using the oscillator there. Um, I went through a couple of the other things. It's um, reverbs. I went through the compressor. I went through a couple of things. Um, I'm kind of committed to that hi-hat because that hi-hat's really grimy. And every other effect that I'd put into it, man, was kind of really making that double hi-hat that I'm using. It was really making it come out too much and it was too annoying. So I decided just to stick with the oscillator, which gives it a crunch, makes it heavy as well. I think that's fine, man. For the lo-fi, for the style that we're going for, I think that's just, um, uh, you know what I mean? We're making a real simple beat, man. Real minimalistic. And uh, this allows for it. You see what I mean? So I'm going to resample this. Right, using the resampling method, I'm gonna resample this, and then um, we'll have our drums. Our drums will be nicely set. All right. All right. So here's the thing, guys. We have uh, the drums, right? And then I've got the uh, the sample that I'm gonna put on top of it, right? So what I've basically done. basically recorded that so it's on one track right one loop but what I've then done is so I've recorded it in slow time like this because I want to make sure that all of the notes that are played on this uh, come through on the on the loop right if I play it to this beat I may miss uh, some of the notes that I want right so I played it slow, just recorded it slow, and then this thing has a function on it that allows me to um, correct the, the BPMs, right? So almost like the timing of the whole thing. So by adjusting that, I was able to play it. Now, it, I was able to play it in time. It's almost like when you're mixing records, you've got a beat, and you slow down your record to, uh, to match the to match the uh the the beat you're trying to you know, the drums you're trying to play it over right so but what it does to it is it like this it has like this vibration or something running through it because it's trying to match it right so you're going to end up with that so Now, I have the loop, but then there's another function in this. So now I've got it all fitting in time, but now what I want to do is I don't like the pitch that it's on. I mean, it's nice. It sounds good, but but I wanted to just make it a little bit more grimy. So what I can do is there's a pitch function here. Just 
turning a knob here, man. It has this knob here. Can you see it? But the good thing is it doesn't... Add, it brings the pitch down, but it doesn't stretch it out, right? So once I was happy with that, which was that, then I went and I recorded, I recorded it again. And then you end up with... Alright man, so I end up with that, uh, let's just, um, yeah, cool. Now guys, now it's a matter of just going through the other samples that I have, the other, the sprinkle samples as I call them, you know, puts and sprinkles, so I've got different, different ones like this. It's really busy though, but I like the strings out of it, so it's about just grabbing those strings. And with this, you, you have to resample each time, so... What I'll do is, I'll go through and I'll look for the pitch that I want, so I tune it to how I want it to suit the beat. In this case, that sort of pitch, it went from this, from that to that, this pitch. And then after I've got the pitch, I'll play the sample, but what I'll do is, um, I'll then, I'll then um, correct the, the beats per minute, you know what I mean? So... I'm used to doing the tune down, and what the tune down does is it tunes it down, so it brings it, the, it brings the pitch down, but it also stretches it because it plays it slower. So I'm having to manually do that on on this machine. You know what I mean? You, if you haven't got a tune down function, that's something that you can do. You could bring the pitch down, and then after you bring the pitch down and it's playing on key, then you can go ahead and you can um stretch it out by changing the BPMs that it plays it on, you know what I mean? And then after that, see I've just got that, I've got the sample that I want, and then just to make it a little bit more ambient, I went ahead and put, there's a, there's a thing here that's called a tape echo, you know what I mean? So it's almost like a delay, like a manual delay sort of thing, so then I could put that sort of stuff. Adding more stuff. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna add a little bit more and then I think I'll just do a bass actually. Alright? Cool. Hi right, guys. Now obviously we want to have a bass, but it's very difficult to have a bass on this machine. So when you run into this sort of problem, one thing you can do is sample bass. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sample from Keith Sweat. The reason is is because this is a hip hop beat. But R and B is, you know, it's got a nice focus. It's a really slow type of bass. You know what I mean? So we're gonna extract some of this, <clears throat> and the track that we're using, guys, is "Make You Sweat." Now, what we want to do is, is on the machine itself, we want the treble. You know, when we're sampling, we want the treble down, we want the mids mainly down. Um, and what we want to do is just keep those low levels, you know what I mean? So we could take the bass out. See? Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Alright, we go in and we sample that stuff, alright? So it's Keith Sweat. It's on his, uh, is this an album I have here? Um, I'll give you all, my, I'll give you, I give all my love to you. Sorry about my reading and shit. Um, but that's the record there, man. So, uh, sample, that's what we're sampling. We're going to get the bass out of that. All right, cool. This is what I mean, guys. You're not sampling the whole loop. You're just grabbing bits and pieces. Again, we're, um, we're doing like that standalone style of sampling. All right, you see? I've just got that bit. This bit, dun, dun. bit of a feel, another one, like that. I, have, I can't do 16 levels on this, man. I mean, I could be wrong. If, if man, for you cats that really know how to use this machine, 
I mean, if there's a way I could sort of set 16 levels or you got like a really cool way of doing a bass, man, please, uh, you know, share it with me, man. I'd love to learn, right? But um, I'm using a sampling style, man. I mean, this is what I this is what I like to do, man. I like to sample. I like the challenge, you know what I mean? So um, I've got this. So while my beat's playing... Sampled bass, sample bass, bass. I'll go through, I'll put the bass on that, and uh, you know what, guys, I think we'll just do a track presentation, alright, man? I don't want to drain this beat or anything, okay? It is a lo fi beat, minimal beat. But, um, you know what I mean? It's just having a little bit of fun, man. All right, let's do a track presentation. All right, guys, track presentation time. You know what I mean? Um, used a bit of Keith Sweat bass. Bit of a bit of a soundtrack there as well. You know what I mean? Just a different machine. Just try to change it up a little bit, man. This this machine really does challenge your sampling abilities, uh, your sampling abilities. Uh, but let's check it out, right? So I've got that. It's a nice one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna put that bass in. It's just going from one loop to the next. That's it for me, man. I feel like I'm drifting on a cloud when I'm doing this beat, man. You know what I mean? So that's it for me, guys, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Something a little different. I was intending on actually showing different uh, different ways of uh, doing patterns with your kick drum and all that, man. But I think I'll save it for next week, man. I saw this thing laying around. Some people were asking about it, man. So I thought I'd just make a beat. You know what I mean? I had the time today to do it, man. So, uh, guys, take care of yourselves, man. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. You know what I mean? We'll uh, keep on having some fun, man. You know what I mean? Every single week, we'll come back uh, next week for weekend beat time, man. So, you guys take it easy. I will be posting up some of the good quality versions of all these tracks, man. But I want to do it the best way possible. I want to present it. You know what I mean? I don't want to just throw it up there like some slut man and then just let everything just happen to it man and not care about it you know what I mean music is precious so uh till next week guys I'll catch you yeah peace